Platelet-rich plasma, or PRP, injections can offer robust long-term pain and symptom relief for people suffering from thumb joint arthritis, but not all PRP is the same, and overpaying for inferior quality PRP will result in poor outcomes. In this video, I will go over what platelet-rich plasma is, discuss how it works, and review data from a randomized controlled trial comparing PRP injections to cortisone injections. I'll also review what you need to look out for so you don't pay for inferior quality PRP. Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Pang here. Thumb osteoarthritis, specifically at the carpometocarpal joint, also known as the trapeziometocarpal joint, is a common cause of pain and disability. Despite it being a very small joint, symptoms can be debilitating. It can restrict thumb movement, cause weakness and instability of the thumb, and reduce pinch and grip strength, all of this will make day-to-day -day activities rather painful. And while traditional treatment options for thumb osteoarthritis, such as medications and splinting, may provide some pain relief, they may not always be effective in managing severe symptoms. And this is why physicians may recommend a corticosteroid injection in such cases. But the reality is that these shots do not provide long-term symptom relief. And to make matters worse, corticosteroid injections can cause damage to healthy cartilage. Cortisone injections in knees and hips are associated with developing worse arthritis as well as a condition known as rapidly destructive joint disease. For this reason, it is essential to move away from the toxicities of cortisone injections and explore alternative treatment options. Platelet-rich plasma injections can fill this treatment gap. PRP involves drawing blood from the patient, separating it into layers using a centrifuge, and taking the layer that has platelets and growth factors and injecting it into an area that is causing pain or disability. The underlying concept behind PRP is based on the fact that our bodies have an incredible amount of growth factors and signaling molecules that can help reduce pain and inflammation. Platelets are one such molecule that can activate cascades which can help alleviate symptoms. PRP injections have been studied extensively and have been shown to be beneficial for many other orthopedic conditions, but do they work for the treatment of thumb osteoarthritis? This randomized controlled trial looked to compare ultrasound-guided intraarticular PRP injections versus corticosteroid injections for the treatment of mild to moderate thumb joint osteoarthritis. Bone-on-bone -bone or grade 4 osteoarthritis was excluded from the study. A total of 32 patients were divided into two groups. Group A got two PRP injections while group B got two corticosteroid injections. The second injections in each group were administered 15 days after the first one. The study's PRP consisted of a 20 cc blood draw which was concentrated down to 2 cc final volume. The authors did not report platelet counts or platelet concentrations, but by my estimate it would be around 3 billion platelets per injection. Two injections of 3 billion platelets would equal to roughly 6 billion platelets total. Patients were then assessed at 3 months and 12 months with visual analog pain scores as well as a Q- questionnaire. With regards to pain scores, both treatment modalities had significant improvements at 3 months compared to the respective pre-intervention scores. At 12 months, however, the PRP group continued to show significant improvement in scores, whereas the steroid group had scores that were essentially back to baseline. Functional and symptom assessment via the Q- score showed similar results. Both groups improved at 3 months compared to their baseline, but at 12 months, the PRP group continued to show improvements whereas the steroid group was back to baseline. Satisfaction levels were also significantly higher in the PRP group at 12 months when compared to the steroid group. Almost 70% of patients reported being satisfied with PRP treatment when compared to only 13% in the steroid group. The authors go on to conclude that PRP injections significantly improve pain and function for mild to moderate thumb joint arthritis in both the mid and long term and achieve significantly better results in the long term compared with intraarticular steroid injections. Now, I tried looking through PubMed for additional studies, but unfortunately, there is a severe lack of clinical trials specifically examining the effectiveness of PRP in treating thumb joint arthritis. The only other study listed on PubMed was this pilot study with a mere 10 patients who also received two PRP injections spaced four weeks apart. Their PRP was obtained from a 15cc blood draw and concentrated to a final volume of 122cc yielding approximately 2 billion platelets per injection and then 4 billion platelets total. 
While this study showed significant pain benefits at six months follow-up, there was no improvements in observed DASH scores. And by the way, if you're finding value with this video, please do me a favor and click the like button. Doing so will help this information spread to more people and help them too. Thanks for doing that, I really appreciate it. Okay, so what are my thoughts on these studies? The first thing I wanna say is that there just aren't enough studies out right now. From the two studies that we have, the big critique is that their sample sizes are so small, making it difficult to draw broad conclusions. Nonetheless, the available evidence suggests that PRP may be an effective treatment option for thumb arthritis and may be superior to corticosteroid injections. I'm comfortable making this conclusion because the data is consistent with clinical trial data for other indications that have been studied much more extensively. This includes knee osteoarthritis, tennis elbow, golf Offers elbow, plantar fasciitis, and gluteal tendinopathy. In addition, PRP injections can potentially slow the progression of arthritis, introducing a large number of platelets and growth factors into an arthritic joint can modify the joint's internal environment. Specifically, it can shift the environment from a toxic and inflammatory state to a more neutral one. Clinical studies conducted on knee arthritis patients have demonstrated a decrease in inflammatory markers such as TNF-alpha and IL-1 beta inside the joint six months following PRP treatment. The reduction of these inflammatory markers not only improves symptoms, but also slows down the progression of arthritis. One study has suggested that PRP injections can reduce the rate of arthritis progression by 50% over five years when compared to placebo. This highlights the promising potential of PRP as a treatment that can not only help with symptoms, but that may also have disease modifying effects. In addition, recent studies on PRP have placed a much larger emphasis on platelet counts and the dose response relationship. This is actually an extremely important point that many physicians overlook and can result in inferior quality PRP. Many doctors think all PRP injections are the same and don't understand that just like with everything else in medicine, there is a dose-response relationship. This has been extensively studied in knee osteoarthritis where low-dose PRP is no better than placebo, whereas high-dose PRP results in superior outcomes. My recommended approach for the treatment of thumb joint arthritis is to begin with a 30cc blood draw, which typically provides around five to six billion platelets for one treatment. This is then concentrated down to a volume of one cc. With just one injection, I have seen excellent results using this PRP dose with symptoms lasting up to one year for patients with mild to moderate arthritis. I've even seen decent results with grade four osteoarthritis, though these patients tend to need more frequent injections to manage their symptoms effectively. Lastly, I think it's important to note that several factors can impact the effectiveness of your PRP treatment. What you do before and after your treatment can significantly affect the outcomes. Watch these videos next to learn more about what to look out for leading up to your PRP injection and what you need to do afterwards. Thanks for watching.